Welcome to the installation of Miguel Martinez Signs as president of St. Francis College. Please remain standing for our national anthem performed this morning by the St. Francis Preparatory School Concert Band. now by Auxiliary Bishop of the Diocese of Brooklyn, James Massa. Bishop Massa was ordained in 1986 and joined the diocese right after. He served several roles both here and outside the diocese and returned to Brooklyn in 2011. I now call upon Bishop Massa to deliver the invocation. Let us pray. O oh God, as we gather on this day of hope and renewal to inaugurate Miguel Martinez Sainz as our 19th president, we invoke the prayer of the humble friar of Assisi, whose name this college takes for itself. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Señor, hazte nos un instrumento de tu paz, May your servant Miguel witness to the authentic human values found in all the great religions and spiritual paths of the human family, not only by his words, but by his faithful actions on behalf of all the students, faculty, staff, and alumni entrusted to his care. May your holy name be praised, O just God, O lover of peace, O source of every blessing. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Thank you, Bishop Massa. It is my distinct pleasure and privilege to once again welcome all of you here today for this historic event in the nearly 160 year history of St. Francis College. The installation of Dr. Miguel Martinez Sainz, the 19th president of our institution. We appreciate that so many of you have taken time out of your busy day, busy schedules, and on this beautiful day to celebrate with us 
including leaders and representatives from academic institutions, elected officials, community leaders, faculty, staff, and students. In fact, there are so many folks here today that there are a contingent of student athletes watching in the adjacent room. The many delegates from colleges and universities come from across the country and represent our colleagues from local and regional institutions, Franciscan institutions, and many connections that President Martina Sines has made in his almost 20 years as an academic leader. I'd like to give a special thank you to some of our partners in government in attendance, Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, State Senators Kevin Parker and Roxanne Persaud, Assembly Members Walter Mosley, Felix Ortiz, Joanne Simon, and Latrice Walker, City Councilman Steve Levine, and City Councilman Eric Ulrich, St. Francis College Class of 2007. Joining us today for your musical enjoyment is Orlando Alonzo, a Cuban-born pianist and conductor. Mr. Alonzo has performed internationally at some of the most prestigious venues in the world, playing with cellist Yo-Yo Ma and violinist Joshua Bell at the Kennedy Center in Washington, DC. He has also performed here in New York City at Lincoln Center and Carnegie Hall, as well as at the Piccolo Spoleto Festival and the New Docta Festival in Argentina. He has played with prominent orchestras in Cuba, throughout North and South America, and across Europe and China. Mr. Alonzo studied at the Havana Conservatory, Juilliard, and under Kurt Masser at the Manhattan School of Music. He is the founder of the Osea Symphony Orchestra in New York and the Ensemble LPR, and is a member of Bohemian Trio and the Alonso Brothers. Please welcome Orlando Alonso as he performs select pieces from Danzas Cubanas by Ignacio Cervantes.
Thank you. Now it is my pleasure to welcome this young man, a political science major with a minor in history. He knew early on that he wanted to make the world a better place through effective and socially responsible government. First comes law school, then becoming an elected official. So far he is one for one, having already won his first campaign last spring. On behalf of our students, it is my pleasure to introduce the president of the St. Francis College Student Government Association, Mr. Alexander Baum. Thank you, Dr. Lancaster, for that warm introduction. I'm honored and humbled to be here today on behalf of the student body for St. Francis College. Throughout my time here, I've learned that a true leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. And that's exactly the kind of leader we have here with Dr. Miguel Martinez Sáenz. Or, as many in this room affectionately call him, Miguel. Although he's only been here for a short time period, I can honestly state that Miguel's passion, optimism, and vibrant personality has been contagious across the St. Francis College community. Every time Miguel speaks, Everyone is captivated by the amount of pride and passion he takes in his job and the humility he has for his position. His prior experience in higher education and his background in philosophy serve as a testament to his wisdom as a transformational leader and as a teacher, preaching the values of hospitality, service, and humility, while inspiring us all to follow in his footsteps. Dr. Martinez Sainz is a true champion of our Franciscan ideals and the future for St. Francis College is as bright and hopeful as the dawn of a new day. Over the last several months, I've had the pleasure to work alongside Miguel, and I can honestly tell you, I've learned more from him in that short time period than I've learned from all my algebra, algebra classes combined in high school. <laughs> Keeping our theme of hospitality in mind, he's taught us not just to be leaders in our community, but to be servant leaders by thinking of others before we think about ourselves. The same kind of servant leadership that was exemplified during President Dugan and President Machiarola's time at our institution. Miguel has taught us to take pride in who we are and where we come from. He encourages us to tell our story because our story is just as powerful as anyone else's story. And that's what makes us different. That's what makes us who we are. He's taught us to listen and learn from one another and to embrace the challenges that we face and attack them with the same enthusiasm as Andres Cantor has while commentating a soccer match. He's encouraged us to dream our biggest dream because there's nothing stopping us from achieving us and turning that into a reality. But most importantly, he's taught us to believe in ourselves and to believe in one another. And that's why we believe in him. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to present this mace on behalf of all students of St. Francis College to our 19th president, Dr. Miguel Martinez Sáenz. Congratulations. Several years ago, the college commissioned a local sculptor, Carol Halle, to craft three distinct maces to be included in our academic ceremonies. The mace is a symbol of the authority and independence of a chartered college, and each one represents a pillar of St. Francis College, corporation, <laughs> faculty, and students. Today, we will formally present each mace to President Martinez Sines. Did you do it already? <laughs> So that part's done now. <laughs> For more than 20 years, that's not written here, just so you know. <laughs> For more than 20 years, Dr. Michelle Hirsch has played a vital role on our campus for her students and her colleagues 
and has served in various roles, including chair of the psychology department and as the first director of assessment for the college. Dr. Hirsch received her PhD in psychology from Stony Brook University and joined the faculty in 1997. She currently serves as accreditation liaison officer, director of our general education program, and speaker of the faculty assembly. On behalf of our esteemed faculty, please join me in welcoming Dr. Hirsch. We're just gonna lower this a little bit. On behalf of the faculty of St. Francis College, President Martina Sines, less than two weeks ago, we celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day. King's work, much like the work of St. Francis, focused on one of the most basic tenets of our great democracy, social equality. In 1966, King preached, I choose to identify with the underprivileged. I choose to identify with the poor. I choose to give my life for the hungry. I choose to give my life for those who have been left out of the sunlight of opportunity. I choose to live for those who find themselves seeing life as a long and desolate corridor with no exit sign. This is the way I'm going. If it means suffering a little bit, I'm going that way. If it means sacrificing, I'm going that way. If it means dying for them, I'm going that way because I heard a voice saying, do something for others. And more than half a century later, St. Francis College honors King's legacy and his call to inspire and lift others. Just a few years ago, we initiated what we call Francis and Claire Week. It's an opportunity for our college community to come together and, true to our mission, reflect on the lessons of St. Francis and St. Clair. This past fall, our focus for Francis and Clair Week was hospitality. When King said, I heard a voice saying, do something for others, I posit that St. Francis would have given him an amen. Also focusing on social equality, the passing of the 1862 Morrill Act and the creation of our land grant and uh, our land grant colleges and universities allowed higher education in America to focus on access. Smart folks back then understood the power of an advanced education. It's a private endeavor for a public good. This is what drives us academics. We teach, we conduct research, we publish, we serve in a myriad of ways because we strive to use our knowledge to lift up others and their communities. Access. It's the reason we academics come to work each day, to welcome those who want to learn, who want to contribute and make a meaningful difference. We want to inspire those who understand they too can productively touch the lives of others, and that just brings us back, doesn't it, to hospitality and kings do something for others. And we do. I have great respect for my academic colleagues. In the short time you have been with us, I hope you have seen and felt this faculty is dedicated to hospitality. And surely, on this day of your inauguration, we expend our, extend our hospitality to you and your family. But wait, one more thing about this faculty that you should know. We have a strong moral compass. Our hearts lie in our respective disciplines. How we do our work is as important to us as the final product. How we interact with our students matters to us. How we treat one another matters to us. Let's review. Social equality, access, hospitality, and a strong moral compass. Certainly, these are some of the most important ingredients for a successful institution of higher education. We are confident that you will lead us with your signature mix of these ingredients. And so, President Miguel Martinez Sainz, you have our commitment to work with you every day to live our mission and to serve our students in the most sincere way 
we welcome you to St. Francis College. Dr. Hirsch will now present the base <laughs> on behalf of our faculty. A St. Francis alumnus and longtime member of the Board of Trustees, our next speaker has been a leader in the public and private sector for many years. He began his career working for the Brooklyn Borough President before moving on to lead the New York City Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development. He held executive positions with Jeffrey K. Brown Associates, the New York Metropolitan Region of the American Cancer Society, and Way to Work. Every day as executive director of Big Brothers and Big Sisters of New York City, he is making a difference in hundreds of lives. As part of our inauguration events, we had a great day here last Saturday where dozens of these children and their bigs came for a day of mentorship, the Franciscan way. On behalf of our St. Francis College alumni, it is my pleasure to welcome our inauguration committee chairman and St. Francis College trustee, Mr. Hector Bautista, St. Francis class of 1984. Thank you, Provost uh, Lancaster, for that wonderful introduction, and good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Inauguration Committee, the Presidential Search Committee, and our alumni, I'm so pleased to be here today with the St. Francis College community. What a wonderful day to officially welcome, recognize, and celebrate Miguel Martinez San. As a member of the Search Committee, I had the opportunity to really get to know him well. So it comes as no surprise to me and all of us who have seen his career over the years, he's already began to change our world in such a significant way. Indeed, he has an exceptional career thus far. And certainly, we're very lucky to have him at the helm. But today, I will not talk about his 17 years of academic leadership and experience. His accomplishments speak for themselves. I'm gonna talk about his core values and my hope for St. Francis College under his leadership. When we conducted the search for the president, of course, we spoke to Miguel Martinez at length. But the truth is, within minutes of meeting him, it was easy to see the impact he will have on our institution. As a small college of big dreams, we are committed to a lifelong of education, service, and leadership. Socially, responsibilities and mutual respect is at the core of our values. And these are the core values of our new president his drive and still and hospitality, everything we, he does and is, the, is the key of his leadership vision. It sounds so simple. Be good to one another, offer a helping hand so others can succeed. But this can be such a tremendous impact on the life of so many students. And what, a, what better time than now to have a leader so committed to this idea of hospitality. In today's climate, the peace and security of so many are threatened. Under President Martinez Sand leadership, St. Francis College will help our students rise above such challenge, build a secure, peaceful future. SFC will assure that the groups of people from all walks of life feel welcome and protected. As a Cuban American and as an immigrant like me, President Martinez Sand may may have experienced firsthand the difficulty of not being accepted. And I know he will work hard to ensure that all our students are feel welcome and protected here, here at the college. He's also gonna make sure that they're heard and the values are respected. I also trust that President Martinez Sand will help St. Francis College build the next generation of leaders. So this hospitality does not stop here. Together we will drive our values far beyond our campus. In the words of Pope Francis in his Christmas message last month, may we commit ourselves with the help of God's grace to making our world more human, more worthy for people of today and of the future. 
as I welcome our 19th president St. Francis College, it's with great anticipation and excitement that I look forward to doing exactly that. Dr. Miguel Martinez stands right here at St. Francis College of Big Dreams. Let us build a world together that's more human, more worthy for all of us. Thank you. We get the idea now. <laughs> Mr. Bautista, please present the mace on behalf of the Corporation, St. Francis College. As a police officer, state senator, and now Brooklyn Borough President, Eric Adams has continuously kept his focus on making the world a better place for everyone he serves. Never afraid to fight for justice, he consistently advocates for those whose voices are seldom heard. As borough president, he has worked to forge partnerships and build an interconnected community where families feel safe and businesses can thrive. Last week, he hosted our International Flag Day event outside Borough Hall. It became a public art exhibition of the world's flags, representing the diversity of our St. Francis community, as well as the incredible melting pot that is Brooklyn. On behalf of the community, we are honored to welcome Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. I was snuck in on the side as I walked from Borough Hall uh, countless number of people stopped me and asked for direction. I couldn't tell them I'm rushing across the street. I had to be here on time. Going back seven years ago, uh, watching my baby boy, Jordan, go to American University in Washington, D.C. And Miguel, I remember dropping him off and speaking with the president of the school. And after half an hour, he placed his hands on my shoulders and he says, Eric, I just dropped my daughter off in Carolina. He knew I was going through separation anxiety. <laughs> my boy was 18. He had hair on his face, his voice was deeper, but he was still my baby. For 18 years, I tucked him in and I watched him. And when the professor, the president stated that, I said to myself, he gets it. He gets it. He knows how much I've invested in this young man. And to the faculty and staff and those who made the decision, you have a brilliant head of this college that gets it. When I watched and heard him the first time speak and interacted with him, it is not only what we say and communicate verbally, but how do we communicate with the anatomy of our spirits to understand the full importance of investing in our children and our young people as they leave here. Having them learn college algebra and math and trigonometry and history and philosophy, that is not the primary goal that we're facing during these times of today. When Yale is showing that one out of every four students Enroll in, enroll in a course that teach happiness. 50% increase in suicide among girls, 30% increase in suicide among boys. Our children are starving to find a place within themselves where they can find how do they fit into a country that seems to be spiraling into a level of madness and uncertainty. This is not what America represents. We are better than this. And only great leaders, visionaries, can take our young people where they ought to go, particularly in a borough like Brooklyn, where 47% of Brooklynites speak a language other than English at home. We are the United Nations of America. And right here in St. Francis College on Remsen Street, off of Court Street, down a block from Borough Hall, the center of the universe, Galileo had it wrong. It is here in the borough of Brooklyn that things must happen. The way goes Brooklyn, 
goes New York. The way goes New York goes America. The way goes America goes the globe. More than a tree grows in Brooklyn. The great institution called St. Francis College has grown in Brooklyn and produced great scholars to lead. The continuation of great leadership. You had a great leader in our prior presidents of this institution. And this is a seamless transition to now a great leader and a great man to take us to the next level of what our children need to understand as they prepare for tomorrows. As we go and seek what America needs, it starts here in St. Francis. I'm proud of this institution. I'm proud of what it represents, the spirit of the name of St. Francis and what he meant to humankind and mankind. We don't only want our children to be academically smart. We want them to be emotionally intelligent, thoughtful, and kind, and caring, and responsible, and realizing that they cannot be the partner to sexism, racism, anti-Semitism, anti and now this new philosophy of meism. We are in this together. We have a long road ahead, and we can start the process of out Trump and Trump and let them know America still belongs to the people of the United States. Thank you. Thank you, Borough President. Now please join me in welcoming back Orlando Alonso, who will perform his second interlude from Danzas Cubanas by Ignacio, Ignacio Cervantes.
Orlando. The symbols of the office of the president of St. Francis College are the San Damiano Cross, the college seal, and the college charter. According to Franciscan tradition, it was while praying before the San Damiano Cross in the chapel of San Damiano, just outside of Assisi, that St. Francis received a call to rebuild the church. The original now hangs in the Basilica of St. Clair and serves as a reminder for all Franciscans of our mission to commit our lives and resources to renewing and rebuilding the church in whatever form that might take. The San Damiano Cross will be presented today by Brother William Boslett, St. Francis College of 1970, member of the Board of Trustees and Franciscan advisor at St. Francis College. Brother Bill. Thank you. <laughs> the college seal bears the inscription, Deus meus et omnia, taken from the words St. Francis spoke. The translation of the phrase is, my God and my all, and is the motto of the Franciscan order worldwide. The seal of St. Francis College will now be presented by Brother Leonard Conway, St. Francis College Class of 1971, member of the Board of Trustees, and President of St. Francis Preparatory School. St. Francis College was founded in 1859 by the Franciscan Brothers of Brooklyn. However, it did not receive its charter from New York State until May 8, 1884, which granted permission for this place to officially confer degrees. Here now to present the charter is Dennis Salomon, St. Francis College, Class of 1975, member of the board of M&T Bank Corporation, the College Board of Trustees, and chairman of the search committee that brought President Martinez signs here today. Mr. Salomon. one copy so don't break that <laughs> <laughs> serving on the board of trustees since 2005 and as chairman since 2008 John Tully st. Francis College class of 1967 has had a tremendous positive impact on st. Francis overseeing a period of substantial growth in programs and in the student body. He graduated from law school at the University of Notre Dame, war worked as an assistant district attorney in Manhattan, a trial attorney for the Securities and Exchange Commission, an assistant New York State General Attorney, and for many years at Exxon Mobil Corporation. Currently, he is of counsel in the law firm of Norton Rose Fulbright. It is my pleasure to call upon Chairman Tully to formally and officially charge Dr. Miguel Martinez Sines with the duties of President of St. Francis College. For something that official, I had better stay on script. Uh, thank you all for joining us today, and I speak on behalf of my fellow uh, trustees. You know, when we began the search for the 19th president of St. Francis College, it was a tough time for us. And we looked for someone whose leadership would help unleash the full potential of the talented students, faculty, and administrators at the college. 
Well, I tell you, I speak uh, with great gratitude to the search committee and to all involved because they certainly did their job. And we are blessed to have uh, Dr. Martinez Sands here with us. It only, uh, in only a few months, as you've seen from our student speakers and others, we have learned, everyone here has learned how marvelous he is and the leadership he will provide for us. And we are looking forward to many years of transformative leadership. So now, by the virtue of the authority of the St. Francis College Board of Trustees, I welcome you as the 19th president of St. Francis College. to get a standing ovation before you speak. <laughs> I hope they got that on camera so if it goes sideways, you'll think that was the standing ovation. <laughs> we can fool people. So much to say you can uh, probably imagine. This isn't as scripted as uh, we might hope. We haven't lost the gospel like we did yesterday, but... Um, um, the bishop, thank you very much. I was going to lead with uh, that prayer of St. Francis, and uh, the reason being that that is unquestionably my favorite prayer. It's a reflection I commit on every morning. And it's absolutely critical that we set the day, you know, when we're trying to set up what we're going to do. We've got to set ourselves for the day and I appreciate that. I won't repeat it, but thank you very much. Much gratitude to many, 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 many people. I'm not going to be able to thank everyone. Um, don't worry, the pace will change. Some of you know me. Um, but you need to hold on. I, w I was brief yesterday. That was a reprieve for some of you. But, uh, but the reprieve is not coming twice. <laughs> But to the board, just a couple of recognitions. John, thank you very much for your support. Uh, and you said, I guess it's been a short four or five months. Um, absolutely critical to feel the support of the board. And it's not to mean that we're always in agreement. One of the things I always tell people, dissonance. You need dissonance for us to move forward. And I think there's the appropriate amount of dissonance. Um, and it's absolutely critical that it is in place. Dennis Salomon. Uh, you know, Dennis, I, I will say, uh, he kept me in this space. Um, there were moments because of the timing of the search that I thought we weren't going to be able to make this happen. And simply because, uh, as I think people know, family comes first and the transition was going to be too difficult for the children. But I had conversations with, with Dennis numerous times and uh, it wasn't just about staying or not staying in the search. I was trying to get a feel for the kind of person he is. Because that's what I needed to know. What kind of human beings are we dealing with? And, and Dennis, I thank you very much for your honesty, uh, for your willingness to have extended conversations. Uh, and some of them were quite long. Um, for your willingness to listen and to share. Thank you very much. Hector Batista who was down here, he told me one day I had him at hello. <laughs> I'm not quite sure that's true, but it certainly sounds good. Uh, but he um, chaired the inauguration committee. And not only that, he's uh, been a true champion in terms of pushing and trying to ensure that I'm positioned to do the work that we need to get done here. And so Hector, I thank you very much. Um, a couple of uh, remarks on a couple of families that have to be honored. It's one's the Macirola family. Uh, Frank Macirola, his presidency was critical, and uh, we have to acknowledge who came before us. I can, I don't want to go too far back, so we're going to stop at Frank. But 
One of the things that you see in the space is uh, when Mary is still committed and still present, you see. She's still present in our space. That signals something about the kind of place we are. I thank you for your presence, Mary. And Michael, who disappeared apparently. You can come in, brother. Now you gotta come in and sit down. <laughs> uh, he had to feed the meter because uh, Eric, is Eric still there? Yeah. Eric, brother, we couldn't take care of the meters today. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that after. <laughs> but Michael serves on the board of trustees, and again, the presence is, is absolutely critical because what it signals is, again is something deep about the institution and what it does. I also want to recognize the Dugan family you know, Barbara, I'm going to tell you, um, your presence is just remarkable, I think. For those of you who don't know, Brendan Dugan lied last year. And this is a woman that believes in this place. And I know she's grieving, but she's here with us. That, that is just powerful, powerful. In terms of what it says about not only her, but about the place, I appreciate your presence. Also recognition of Patrick, I don't know where he is, but. Patrick, Brendan's son shortly after Brendan's death, decided to take an even more engaged role in the life of the college and he's leading our alumni association. Again, a testament, not only to the legacy that Brendan left, but to this place and people's willingness to serve. I thank you very much for your presence, brother. Absolutely critical. I've got family and friends that are here and uh, I hope y'all recognize I can't name y'all <laughs> or maybe I can I don't know <laughs> just so you know they have locked the doors <laughs> talk about a captive audience <laughs> now but really I mean I think it's uh, you know I was quite moved I would say yesterday walking into St. Charles I mean just seeing the presence of folks uh, it's been overwhelming, absolutely overwhelming. My brother who's sitting here in the front row, not really, but he got here late. That's the only thing I ever, ever I called him out on that. I, I looked at my wife and said, where's my brother? And she says, I don't know. I think he's lost. I mean, he think he's lost, and now he's found. That was the prodigal son yesterday. You <laughs> see, he took it to heart. <laughs> so now we're going to extend some mercy. <laughs> uh, mercy, mercy me. Oh, but this is a person that has supported and loved me unconditionally. Uh, and at the moments when I didn't deserve it, thank you for your presence. My family. Uh, who, just so y'all get a feel for this, uh, I signed a contract August 8th. We sold the house August 24th. We were in Brooklyn that evening. We were settled in a new house, and I started work September 1. Uh, that's not easy. I remember talking to Johnny. He said, well, it's, you don't have to start September 1. If you, don't, you, know, you can start later. I said, John, you let me worry about that. We're starting September 1, and when we did, and. There's been a lot going on there, but uh, just uh, bring some levity to it. One of the good things about this is my daughter, who's an aspiring volleyball player, is really building up her shoulder muscles. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if she wants to come up and demonstrate, but uh, she's known as extroverted as her father, but I'll, I'll demonstrate for you. I say, Mami, ¿cómo estaba el colegio hoy? 
Me dice, mami, ¿te gusta la comida? Everything. Uh, I call her mommy, but she's obviously not bad. But here's one of the things I want to share. You all do realize these are prefatory remarks. Uh, <laughs> I told you to get ready. Uh, but one of the things that I think we overlook is the wisdom of children. They have insights, incredible insights. Uh, I think I shared this story once, and uh, this is about our, our son, and I'm going to share it uh, now. We're on a subway, and uh, I think uh, some of you heard me. I think I shared it. In a, I don't know where Alexandria is, but I think I might have shared it. She probably forgot, so she'll, I don't know, where, where are you? I shared it maybe in a conversation on hospitality, but we were on a train, and there was a man sitting on, uh, laying down, sleeping on a subway. And my son was very curious about why he was sleeping on the subway. I'll get the story wrong, but don't correct me, Julia. Just, just let me tell my version today. Uh, and he, he said to uh, my wife, Julie, who was, well, why is that man sleeping on the train? Why is he sleeping there? I mean, it's not comfortable. And she's trying to explain, well, some people, you know, don't have anywhere to sleep. What do you mean? You know, why doesn't he get a hotel room then if he wants to sleep? And so I said, well, he doesn't have any money for a hotel room. And he said, well, I got some money. Why don't you just give him some of my money so he can get a hotel room to sleep tonight? Let's not dismiss that. Sometimes we do, oh, how cute. That's not cute. That's what we're called to do. You see, and the kids remind us of what our obligations are. And so I ask you to think about that Listen to those voices because the lessons are deep and uh, we want to dismiss them, but they're not supposed to be dismissed. And then Julie, who is a person that I think believes in me more than I believe in myself. I don't think there's any question about that, actually. Um, I remember when I first interviewed for a, for a job and I said, I don't know what they're going to offer me the job, not this job. Um, although she probably said in this job too. She says that everything I do, she's like, oh no, they're gonna offer you a job. I'm like, that's not the way this works. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, you might think I'm special, but I'm really not that special. No, 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 they're gonna offer you a job. They're gonna offer you a job. She's been right, maybe half the time. She's like, mm -mm, I've been right all the time. Yeah, there she goes. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we don't want to bicker right here, so I'm going to say she was right three quarters of the time. <laughs> but it's incredibly important to have someone believing in you when you have doubts. Uh, I will say that she may not remember this or she may say I made this up, but I remember when we were going to Minnesota, we had um, bought a house a couple years earlier and it was a pretty nice house and we were kind of happy. and. I, decided I wanted to learn more about higher education, so I wanted to come out to a different type of institution, so I applied to regional comprehensives because the mission is aligned, very aligned with our mission, although it's not values-based in the same way. And and uh, we were getting ready to go, and I said, you know, I, God, I sure do hope I can do this job. It was that kind of silence. She looked at me, what? You hope you can do this job? We are leaving our home, and you hope you can do this job? I was like, well, sorry, I shouldn't have told you that, but it is true. Um, but again, that, that kind of sense that you have and you have to have. And, and so, uh, thank you, honey, all over. I don't always say it, but I appreciate your presence and your support. June 13th, 1992, and December 13th, 2017. My parents aren't here today. Those are the dates of their death. My mom died 25 years after my father passed and uh, passed recently. And as those of you who have lost parents know, it's never easy when you expect it, when you don't expect it, when they're older, or they're younger. Um, you know, my mother, in the last year of her life, taught me so much how to have a disposition to see beauty in the midst of such suffering. 
the weekend before she died, I, I was there and a woman that was helping take care of her had her in a, in a wheelchair and she was outside and she was talking about redoing her garden. And the landscaping wasn't quite right and she stopped. And a friend of mine was with me, childhood friend was with me. And she said to him, do you see how beautiful that flower is? How lucky are we? He was blown away. We went for a beer after and he said, how does she do it? I said, I don't know, but I sure wish when that moment comes that I can be like her. Julie, I remember this story and uh, bring some levity to it. Uh, Julie told me uh, when I, Julie's my wife, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> Some of you might have got a little distracted, but uh, so uh, she said, I don't know when it was, but it wasn't too long after she met my mom. She said, I have never met a mother and son more alike in my life. <laughs> That's true. All the other stuff wasn't true. But I tell you what, I took that as the highest compliment. And she knows it, because I would always tell her, thank you very much. I think that would annoy her a little bit, because it was usually when my mother was getting on her nerves that she would say it, you know. <laughs> and one day, uh, I don't remember the details, but my mom was doing what only she could do, and she said, apple tree. That was Julie said, apple tree, right? The apple doesn't far from the tree. And my mom's like, apple tree? What do you mean? What it what is apple tree? Why are you talking about apple trees? And Julie's looking at me like, is she crazy? Why does she not know what I'm saying? She's the apple, the tree. The apple falls close to the tree. My mom's like, mm, okay. <laughs> but that's what it was. And, and, and you know, I am so blessed to have had her in my space. And, and I mean it in so many ways. I mean, my father passed in 1992, 25 years. And, and her joy of life was remarkable and I hope that I'm breathing her and my father into this space so you can feel what it is they they gave me what the world needs now a cosmopolitan vision for St. Francis College I'm trying to move this thing but I don't have to point out that the world has grown more unpredictable and somewhat more chaotic, even as or because it grows more interconnected. The declining cost of transportation and communication in the 21st century has drastically increased the contact between people across national boundaries. The internet and cellular service enables real-time interaction from different parts of the globe in ways we couldn't have imagined 10 years ago. Cheaper shipping costs provide monetary incentives for businesses to move production abroad, seeking greater profits. In the process, increased engagement between national economies allows for worker remittances and foreign direct investment to play a role in the global marketplace, again, that we couldn't have foreseen. Because of the myriad ways that domestic decisions are now intertwined at the global level, Seemingly remote occurrences have significant potential to affect the well-being of distant populations. Put somewhat differently, the drastically altered relevance of national borders in the age of globalization will force educators and practitioners of all stripes to consider ever more seriously the scope and impact of their work. I would argue then that one of the responsibilities of educators, educators here at St. Francis College is to inspire our students and to provide them the tools necessary, including a moral compass, if you will, to negotiate the difficult terrain that lies ahead. Make no mistake, I believe firmly that the next generation of leaders has to be educated differently than in years past. And of significance, world leaders need to emerge from different parts of the globe. Stanley Harawas, a theologian, once remarked in a talk that people who want to rule the world go to Harvard. No offense to the Harvard folks, but that may be true. But if, we, if one believes that the world is the way it is because it's the way we want it to be, maybe we should give other folks an opportunity to lead. 
I believe our students have the grit, the fortitude, the joie de vivre, graciousness, and life experience necessary to lead differently. They bump up against a world representative of the world's people in ways that make them conscientious of others and the challenges that people face. They live in an environment where they have to negotiate complexity and nuance daily. It is our burden as educators to channel their talent, their dispositions, and to let them believe that there is no reason the next leaders of the world should not come from St. Francis College. After all, our graduates include numerous political leaders, both national and political, CEOs for the world's top financial institutions, CEOs and executives for numerous nonprofits making plain our commitment to service, world-class teachers, professors, healthcare practitioners, entertainers, and athletes. I'd like to share a little known fact. In one of our country's darkest hours, St. Francis College was front and center. On the morning of 9-11, New York City Fire Department Commissioner Thomas Von Essen, class of 72, found himself in the midst of the most challenging day of his career. And when his first Deputy Commissioner, Bill Fien, died at Ground Zero, Von Essen chose another alum to serve, Michael Regan, class of 1980. Over at the NYPD, the first deputy commissioner that day was Joseph P. Dunn, class of 69. And the director of the city's Office of Emergency Management was held by another alum, Richard Shear, class of 76. Think about it for a moment. People at or near the top of the most important service agencies on 9-11, all St. Francis College graduates. So let us imagine a college committed to educating and forming its members so that they all strive to be peaceful, contemplative, intellectually astute, joyful, compassionate, creative, courageous, and service-focused warriors. I use warrior intentionally. The world is in desperate need of exemplars who are willing to sacrifice and willing to take risks as they challenge us to live up to our spouse commitments. Warriors that recognize the importance of accepting full responsibility for creating conditions where all people have the opportunity to live a dignified life. You see, although sometimes we think it's heroic when someone volunteers on Saturday at a homeless shelter, in my view, the real heroes are those that imagine and work to implement a world where homeless shelters are unnecessary. Consider the fact that if you ask someone a basic question like, do you think we can colonize the moon? They tell you, yeah, it's just a matter of time. But if you ask those same people if they can imagine a world where no child goes hungry, they tell you to stop being so idealistic. Think about what that tells us about our priorities. We should let our compassionate and moral imagination lead us so that we can honestly say that we did our part to ensure that the arc of the universe does, in fact, bend toward justice. A short digression is in order. Some argue that a college education should prepare students for the weir real world, whereby they mean the world of industry and commerce. What else is there to life? Joy, love, death, sorrow, beauty, virtue, wisdom, friendship. I argue that we need to prepare our students and each other to become people who value friendship and community, who strive to live humbly, caringly, compassionately, and generously. In short, people who live fully. The claim here isn't that instrumental justifications, higher paying jobs, sellable professional skills, high scores on graduate exams are wrong. But insofar as education is defended primarily in terms of enhanced practical outcomes, advocates and defenders fail to articulate one of the most important justifications, namely being disposed to the practice of reflecting on, discussing, and evaluating the question of what sorts of lives we ought to live. Sometimes we think we're being deeply philosophical when we ask ourselves, is there life after death? Colleagues and friends, what I want us to think about is, the question is, is there life before death? What does it mean to live before death? We're on a journey, it's a finite journey from womb to tomb, and the question is, who are you gonna be in the meantime? Are you gonna live lives of service, or are you gonna live selfishly? A community of peers and a community of scholars, scholars who come to appreciate and investigate the world in quite varying terms, will enable the growth of our students and each one of us. It is essential to our formation 
keep in mind every educator's basic hope is that students will come to realize through their exposure to a college community that life is quite complex and attempting to live a life fully requires us to engage in unimagined ways with the world and those who inhabit it. That living a fully human life means thinking significantly beyond economic concerns, even when we recognize they have a rightful place in our thinking and acting. That living fully means putting yourself in situations that appear frightening and discomforting. That aspiring to be excellent means exposing yourself to the possibility of failure. That being educated doesn't mean going to school and earning a degree. It means developing holistically. So, what if there was a college situated in the heart of the world's most culturally, socioeconomically, religiously, ethnically, and racially diverse city in the world? What if there was a college that decided that educating its students in the midst of the cacophony and chaos of an urban center is the only way to prepare students for life in a 21st century? What if there was a college where students had the opportunity to connect directly with community leaders, business leaders, political leaders, social entrepreneurs, and more? What if there was a college where students could be exposed to cutting-edge healthcare research, the reformation of the largest school system on the planet, the epicenter of music innovation, and of an arts community that is second to none? This is the learning environment that we have the opportunity to live into, an opportunity that will require bold risk-taking, and it's not for the faint of heart. But I will tell you, I believe firmly, this is what we're called to do. As we teach our students the difference between a calling and a career, between a vocation and a profession, we must challenge one another to realize that the greatest gift we can give to the world is to live lives of service in and for others. We are called to invest in our students, in our faculty, and in our staff to enable all members of the St. Francis College community to live, learn, and aspire in the world's most impressive human ecosystem. And we must invite the world to take notice. As we imagine this college, a college rooted in a commitment to radical hospitality, to character formation, to interfaith dialogue, to creating conditions so that students will learn the technical skills necessary to navigate a 21st century workplace while never losing sight of the importance of ensuring that all students learn to cultivate their humanity, we must be prepared and willing to take risks, to act in ways that may feel uncomfortable, and we must do it with an uncompromising focus on designing and implementing a world-class learning environment for the 21st century and beyond. By 2022, the expectation is that we will be educating 3,000 students on our Brooklyn campus, students who will continue to be representative of the diversity that we see around us, both in Brooklyn and beyond. This includes opening our campus to the world and inviting over 300 international students to participate in the transformational experience on our campus, modeling our call to global citizenship. As aspiring citizens of the cosmos, we should remain vigilant that our learning environment mirrors and reflects the diversity of the world around us. By 2022, we will have seen significant growth in our graduate programs and our online and hybrid offerings as we try to adapt to a technological age while not losing sight of the value of importance of face-to-face -face and human-to-human -human interactions. A focus on healthcare and human services broadly understood is critical. By 2022, our health-related programs will be fully enrolled and will continue to set the bar quite high. Already, our first nursing cohort had licensure pass rates of 92%, proving that if we think mindfully, deliberately, and collaboratively, we can achieve great things. Expanding our community partnerships to guarantee our students challenging and rewarding practical experiences will be critical. Relatedly, we will continue to celebrate and support foundational science programs, ensuring that they continue preparing disciplinary experts while supporting our more professionally oriented programs. Be on the lookout for us doubling down on our commitment to producing more school teachers for New York City. We know that even though many have come to undervalue teachers, they are in the best position to change the world. Empowered and supported teachers are change agents par excellence. Focusing on the need to have teachers who are certified in special education and English as a second language, we will be hiring faculty, expanding our collaborative partnerships, and recruiting from a wide range of prospective students. Our Troops to Teachers program 
is a testament to our commitment to men and women who have chosen to serve our country and to our recognition that teaching is one of the world's most noble professions. By focusing on one of our greatest strengths, we will also be investing more heavily in the business arena with special attention paid to accounting, finance, and entrepreneurship. By 2022, we should double the number of students enrolled in these programs. Not only because these are programs that have job placement records and career success numbers that stack up against the most recognized programs from across the country, but because we at St. Francis College are committed to educating accountants and financiers that have a deep appreciation and devotion to others. As I said, the real heroes are those that imagine and work to implement the social conditions necessary to eliminate the need for soup kitchens and the like. And while we work to be counted among the leaders in healthcare, business, and education, we cannot forget our rich, rich history of providing a long, strong liberal arts foundation grounded in the humanities and social sciences and present in all of our programs. By 2022, we will strengthen this foundation by increasing our commitment to interdisciplinary programming, the funding of labs and centers which provide the research base for such work to take place and which will help us fulfill our promise to educate the whole person for a full relational life. To achieve these goals and provide the richest possible learning environment for our students, we will have to reimagine our facilities. By 2022, you will witness the conversion of a number of our spaces so that we can allow the arts to sing and dance more conspicuously in our midst. New York City and Brooklyn, its own right, are the epicenter of the arts. Their presence should be felt in all we do. We need to invest in a vision for our library that keeps pace with advances in technology, but also provides a learning environment conducive to our commuter population. By 2022, we expect the creation of more state-of-the-art classrooms so that our faculty can innovate and allow their creative energies to inform their engagement with students and with their research. We also need to create more informal gathering spaces for our students so they can be at home, even when away from home, and enjoy the richness of experiences available here and in our Brooklyn campus. And importantly, we need to upgrade our athletic facilities. By 2022, our athletic programs will be setting the standard for what it means to underscore student and student athlete a program that will tell the world that you do not have to compromise athletic prowess for academic excellence or commitment to community. You can have it all. We will set the standard in the conference and beyond by winning on the court, in the classroom, and in community. We aren't going to be shy on the court. Be on the lookout for NCAA appearances in men's and women's basketball, men's soccer, quite possibly women's soccer, a Final Four appearance by our water polo teams, and more. Also be on the lookout for some expansions in those areas. Some of you may not know our student athletes are among the academically elite students at St. Francis College. Our women's college team has been in the nation's top five teams in terms of GPA for the last five years. Finished this fall with a 3.76 GPA. We had other three, three teams with 3.5s or higher. You can have it all if you focus on it. But as I hinted earlier, we must be bold. We must invest heavily to ensure we can make our vision a reality. Also, we must push ourselves to be long distance runners, challenging one another to consider a horizon that extends beyond a few years. Minimally, we must adopt a 10 year plan, all the while recognizing that we must stay nimble. We will be preparing to launch a public fundraising campaign in the upcoming calendar year and we'll continue conversations about monetizing our capital assets so that we can invest upwards of $200 million over the next 10 years. We must hire more faculty members so that our students have access to professors who have the ability to be fully engaged in the life of the campus. We will hire staff, especially in support areas, to ensure that when we accept the student, we have the structural conditions to ensure their success. We will continue to raise funds for scholarships so students who are motivated and inclined can have access to a St. Francis College education. We will focus on promoting and financially supporting international experiences for our domestic students while inviting the world to St. Francis College. Recognizing that I have some community partners in the room and given that I shook some of your hands, it's important to emphasize that we will have to lean on the community while also doing our part to help them understand why we are an asset, why our students are an incredibly 
incredible untapped resource and letting them know in what ways they can be collaborative. We will continue to work with the city and the state to invest in this infrastructure. They have been partners and we need to continue to have them as partners. I believe this is all possible because what I see is a board of trustees ready to step up and serve even more faithfully than they have in the past. What I see is a faculty willing to reimagine our pedagogical and curricular practices so that students are learning in the most up-to-date ways and so students themselves come to see creativity and innovation as fundamental to their lives. What I see is a staff and administration devoted passionately to the place, the people, and the success of the college. And to reiterate, what I see is a student body that has the grit, fortitude, graciousness, and life experience necessary to lead. As a reminder, this is for the board, this is a time for us to be bold as we let the world know that we are here, that we aspire to excellence, and that we will always keep our students first. It may be daunting, but if we are scared to say it out loud, we have no chance of achieving. Lifting every voice, we will need to sing proudly that although we are a small college, our capacity to dream, to imagine, and to create a community where all have an opportunity to live a dignified life, where all members of the St. Francis College community take seriously the command to love thy neighbor, we will not only espouse this, we will enact this. As I close, I want to share with you the closing verse from a poem by Luis Rodriguez titled, Perhaps. Perhaps when love has become the embers of what we hate, the residue of what we've destroyed, we will come to know that love is a stream that flows through each and every one of us, the water we thirst for in the desert of our days, the ocean from which our tears, full of unmet desires, surge and flow. Dear colleagues and friends, I believe what the world needs now more than ever are living examples of people who strive to live lives of loving service to themselves and to others. I believe sincerely and optimistically that St. Francis College can be a living example of what it means to strive to live in a beloved community. I can only hope that I will find the courage and the fortitude to do my part to guide us at this point in the college's history so that we may be beacons of hope for all those who choose to come here and even those beyond. I thank you very much for your presence, for your support, and importantly, I ask for your prayers. President Miguel, and congratulations again. In what we feel is the only appropriate way to conclude today's ceremony, we look again to the Franciscan Brothers of Brooklyn, the very same order that founded St. Francis College nearly 160 years ago. Please stand as we welcome Brother Damian Novello, Assistant Superior General of the Franciscan Brothers of Brooklyn, to deliver our benediction. Let us put ourselves in God's presence. God of wisdom and new beginnings, you give all good things to your children. We are thankful for the gift of our new President Miguel as he begins his tenure here at St. Francis. We ask you to guide him in the ways of your son Jesus and our Holy Father Francis of Assisi. May he encourage his coworkers and students to have reverence for the unique dignity of each person. May he model a trustful, prayerful family of learners who serve one another, society, and the church. May he foster peace, justice, and a care for all creation 
in this educational community. We ask you to fill this place with your spirit that all who work and learn here may support and care for Miguel as he leads St. Francis in the future. We ask all this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And as a gesture of support and welcome, I would ask you all to extend your hand over Miguel and repeat after me the blessing of St. Francis. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy. May he turn to you and give you peace. May he turn to you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Following the singing of our alma mater, President Miguel will lead the recessional party out. And we ask that all of you join us in the McArdle Center for our inauguration reception. Once again, thank you for coming. And once again, congratulate President Miguel Martinez-Sainz.